This is Thomas from the Chattanooga Public Library, and in tribute to the 2020 Olympics that have been postponed to July of 2021, we've made another video to, that covers the Olympics. You can check out the other video we did on the Olympics on our YouTube channel. Uh, it also has an interview with an Olympian. This video, however, is going to focus on the ancient Greeks, my favorite group of ancient people, who first created the idea of the Olympic Games. Even though there are a couple different myths about how the Olympics got started, the Greeks believe that the, ga the games had the roots in a religion. There's one story that describes the origins of the games as starting with a group of dactyls. Dactyls were an all-male race from Greek mythology, and the dactyl Heracles, not to be confused with Hercules, and his four brothers, Peonius, Empimides, Isis, and Idea, raced at Olympia to entertain the newborn Zeus. Overall, the athletic competition became tied to the worship of the gods, mostly in honor of Zeus. And the revival of the games in ancient Greece was intended to bring peace, harmony, and a return to the origins of Greek life. So in Greece, only freeborn Greek males were allowed to participate in the original Olympics. The Greek Olympics also had fewer events than the long list of sports we have today. And there's also no winter games in ancient times. Their original events included running, sprinting, combat sports like wrestling and boxing, discus throwing, long jump, broad jump, javelin and equestrian events as well. Equestrian, just a fancy word for horse riding. So those events included things like horse racing and chariot racing. The athletes in the jumping events would also use lead weights called halters to help them jump further. Halters are not allowed in today's event. Another thing that would be frowned upon in today's Olympics is that these sporting events were also done in the buff. They competed naked, but being nude was a normal part of Greek life, so it wasn't that weird for them. The ancient Greeks hosted their games every four years, or every Olympiad which became actually a unit of time in historical chronicles in Greek history. Unlike the Olympics of today, which changes cities or countries every four years, the Greeks always held the games in the city of Olympia. Olympia is a pretty small city in southwestern Greece. It was named after the home of the gods, which is Mount Olympias, which is nowhere near where Olympia is at. It's about 175 miles away, practically on the other side of Greece. Every Olympics, the Olympic torch is lit in Olympia and is carried to the hosting country's game site. So now Chrissy is going to talk a little bit more about the Olympic torch and the science of parabolic mirrors. One of the most iconic symbols of the Olympic Games is the Olympic torch. Although it would be very cool to think that the lighting of the Olympic torch and the subsequent marathon that culminates with the flame arriving at the opening ceremony of the games was an ancient Greek tradition, that's not quite the case. In actuality, the pomp and circumstance of the Olympic torch relay didn't begin until 1936. The chief organizer of the 1936 games suggested the addition of an Olympic relay to connect antiquity and modernity. Antiquity means ancient past, and modernity means a modern way of thinking. The torch flame was supposed to symbolize the blaze that burned on Zeus's altar during the original Olympic events in 1776 BC. The 1936 Olympic Committee loved this idea, as did the Germans who hosted the 1936 Games in Berlin. Unfortunately, the Germans took this opportunity to use the message embedded within the torch relay in Nazi propaganda to create a flashy display of strength and power of old empires. Super not cool. Even though the Olympic torch and relay aren't ancient traditions, the ceremonial lighting of the Olympic flame is steeped in ancient technology and Greek mythology. So when you think about how you would light a candle, which is basically a tiny torch, you would probably use a match or a lighter. Well, those options were not around in ancient Greece, so they had to get a little innovative. So here comes the science and math. And warning, some of these words might sound intense and complex, but you are all brilliant and should never be scared of math and science. Just to brush up on some algebra. A parabola is a particular type of arc that is defined by the exact curvature of its sides. So that's a lot of words. So instead, let's look at a picture. All right, so that's pretty easy when it's two dimensional, but what happens when it's three dimensional? And metal, and in the sunlight. Enter the parabolic dish, 
or as the ancient Greeks called it, a scaphia, which translates to a crucible. So when the sun shines on a scaphia, the rays all bounce and reflect off of its sides and collect at one blazing hot point. You put a piece of paper or say a gas torch in that focal point and boom, you get fire. So let's circle back around back to the ancient Greeks' use of the parabolic mirrors. So legend has it that the most famous use of the parabolic mirror comes from 212 BC, when Greek mathematician and inventor Archimedes used the mirror to deter a fleet of approaching ships by creating a large-scale solar death ray type thing. You know, that's not probably how he thought of it or described it, but that's basically what it sounds like. Using a parabolic mirror to light the Olympic flame was suggested by a member of the International Olympic Committee who proposed they use a ritual flame lighting method as described in Plutarch's Life of Numa. Plutarch wrote, a new fire was not lit by means of another flame, but by the touch of the pure and immaculate flame of the sun. So while that is super poetic, the weather does not always cooperate. And so, in the days leading up to the ceremony, event organizers light a flame in the parabolic dish just to be prepared. Lastly, we're gonna talk about the lighting ceremony and what it looks like today. Torch lighting ceremony occurs at the ancient temple of Hera in Olympia and is quite the how to do. I fully recommend all of you going to watch the official Olympic videos of the torch lighting ceremony. It's pretty cool. The original torches were modeled after ancient designs and were built by a German armament producer. And by the way, the original torches, they would only burn for 10 minutes. Yoikes. Nowadays, organizers opt in for more advanced features to keep the flame lit, no matter the weather or circumstances. Advancements such as walls within the torch to ensure it can withstand wind, and a tiny umbrella-like thing for rain, and internal circulating systems. And just in case it does go out, there is always a backup fire from the same parabolic mirror to reignite the torch. After the initial lighting, the torch is carried throughout Greece and then onto different trajectories and routes until it finally reaches the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games, where the Olympic cauldron is lit. Though most of the time we see pictures of the torch held by runners, it's interesting to know the torch is actually carried in multiple different ways. For example, on a boat with rowers, pretty cool. So this summer, while we are all watching the opening ceremony and events, of the now 2021 Olympic Games, I hope you can all reflect on the ancient traditions and legends that have inspired countless people throughout the years. Mm -hmm.